In storytelling, there is always an unspoken agreement between storyteller and audience that, for the purposes of the story, the word of the storyteller is reality. A skilled storyteller uses this agreement to impress upon the audience a new world which, whether tragic or comedic, is full of new possibilities beyond that of our own. This agreement is the most powerful tool in a storyteller's toolbox. A storyteller can change reality through the reality they create, be that a dream where children will not be judged by the color of their skin but the content of their character, or be that a future where the German people rise against their Jewish oppressors. This agreement is powerful, but it is all too easily abused. In the 1950s, television was suffering. FCC head Newton Minow would later summarize the situation of 50s television by saying, When television is bad, nothing is worse. I invite each of you to sit down in front of your own television set when your station goes on the air. Keep your eyes glued to that set until the station signs off. I can assure you that what you will observe is a vast wasteland. You will see a procession of game shows, formula comedies about totally unbelievable families, blood and thunder, mayhem, violence, sadism, murder, western bad men, western good men, private eyes, gangsters, more violence and cartoons, and endlessly commercials, many screaming, cajoling, and offending, and most of all, boredom. Rod Serling, a freelance television writer in the 50s, would seem to agree. Entertainment was mutilated and defiled by all-abiding advertisement and ceaseless censorship. Modern television was bland, corporate, and, worst of all, condescending. Every show on every major network was tailor-made to the sponsor's demand, so much so that Coca-Cola had more creative work on display than any writers did. Rod Serling wanted something different, and he had a plan to get it. How do you do? You gentlemen, of course, know how to push a product. That essentially is your job. My presence here is for much the same purpose, simply to push a product. To acquaint you with an entertainment product which we hope and which we rather expect will make your product pushing that much easier. What you're about to see, gentlemen, is a series called The Twilight Zone. We think it's a rather special kind of series. Essentially, people watch television to get entertained. And the keynote of this series, the thing we're concerned with, the thing we're aiming for, the thing we're working toward is entertainment. This is a series for the storyteller, because it's our thinking that an audience will always sit still and listen and watch a well-told story. Rather than give up on writing altogether, Serling decided that the best way to cut the sponsor out of the picture was to tell a story and tell it well. While most of television was a mad grab for audience attention with spectacles smattered with advertisement, Serling knew that a good story would always be better. The new reality Serling wanted to create was not grandiose and deep, he just wanted to make a reality that was a little more entertaining. He created a reality which captivated audiences and, more importantly, respected them. So, what does The Twilight Zone teach us about ethics? Well, it teaches us that a good story and a good storyteller can make all the difference in the world, and that it's up to us, the storytellers, to tell a story for the right reasons. <laughs>